Well, we're back working on the test bench project. When we left off, I had drilled and tapped all of the holes for our brass standoffs and did a couple of test mountings of a Baby AT and a standard ATX motherboard and everything seemed to work out great. The thing is with a test bench like this, it's not a new idea. There is a couple of people on eBay that are selling basically the exact same thing. It's an aluminum plate and then a option to mount cards to the side. You know, you download a, a map off of Reddit and hey, anybody with a machine shop can go and push one of these out. You can also get like pre-built ones off of AliExpress and some other places on eBay as well. But the idea behind this t particular test bench is to provide some flexibility. I've been using a test bench for the Hardware Asylum Labs and Ninja Lane before that that was really just a cut down case. And I've used that one for almost 20 years now. Strangely enough, it was a system that I built and shipped halfway across the country. It got damaged in transit due to my error of not packing it correctly. It came back, I ripped it apart, and it became my test bench. To get our project back on track, I'm going to take the Dremel with a cutoff wheel and basically just kind of sand down these, these rough spots about where I drilled. When you tap soft metal like aluminum, it tends to mushroom in certain areas and we just want to sand them down so that they're smooth and we'll be doing that on both sides. The next process is a little bit more involved and it stems to how motherboards are mounted and installed. This board will sit on these brass standoffs and which we'll lock it down real quick. Okay, now with this motherboard installed, we're going to have our video cards. This slides into a white PCI slot. And you'll see that not only does the card not fit flush, but it's hitting our plate. This channel we need to cut is actually part of the spec that defines AT and ATX style motherboards and cases. And it's how the cards will lock themselves in. So we have a screw at the top, and we have an alignment down here that will keep the card from sliding in and out. On the expansion card bracket that I chose to use, you can see at the very bottom, these cutouts are actually for the expansion cards. So if we take this other video card, slide it in there, now it's locked in place. But as you can see at the bottom, this part passes through and that is how deep we need to actually cut into this aluminum plate, which is really all the way through. Now to make this cut in aluminum, it's a little difficult, but I'm going to try my cutoff wheel. The thickness of the wheel itself should be sufficient for the expansion cards. And aluminum being a non-ferrous metal tends to not work too well with these uh, metal style grinding discs. But if we go slow, it should actually turn out just fine. That is what we're after. We just need to go from point A to point B.
And there it is. We have our slot cut into the motherboard tray from line to line. And that should allow our expansion cards to pass through. And all we're looking for is that the expansion card will slide in and sit flush. Welcome back to Hardware Asylum. We are on the test bench project. Made a couple of changes. One, I'm using the other bracket. It actually uses the uh, the coarse threaded screws, and I like those a lot better than this one, which used the fine threaded screws. This gives me a few more options because I can use some knurled nuts and stuff on there. Basically, I have our bracket aligned and a couple of clamps holding it in place and a couple of spacers underneath just so that the metal on metal is clamped together well. To make the alignment work, we had to install a motherboard. This is a Pentium 2 out of the vault, ironically enough. And I installed a couple of expansion cards in here to center it. We left a couple of expansion slot covers in place to make sure that they also were in place. And we have basically, let's see if you can see that there. I tried to square up the gaps as much as possible. What we wanted to make sure was accurate was that if we install a card that we can actually screw it down into one of these little screw holes. And with how it's aligned with the two cards installed, one in the ISA slot and one in the PCI slot, I think we have it. Now, since it's clamped in place, this isn't really moving, although it will if you really force it. We'll have to uh, mark the holes and drill them out. Some of you may want to close your eyes for this next part. Those two holes I drilled are in really good spots. One down the other in the corner. The other one up here by the I.O. And we have enough of a gap that it doesn't matter what kind of screw I put in there, it's going to be just fine. The last hole will be drilled about right here. Now that the test bench is technically done, we have just a few little odds and ends to wrap up on it. And uh, we'll just look in here and see what we got. This is uh, a box of spares. So we got some uh, wire. These are actually all of the parts from the cases that I've torn apart. We got some LED displays. Got a triple digit one there. We got some uh, case parts. We got some feet, some uh, IO covers, some screws. I think what we're after. Oh, 
LED strips. Look at that. I think what we're after, ah, it's right here. Primarily, some case feet. And the nice thing about these is that they just screw into the bottom of the case. Some case feet. And there you have it, our test bench for Baby AT and ATX style motherboards is complete. If you like projects like this, be sure to subscribe to Hardware Asylum. Check out the website at hardwareasylum.com and thanks for watching.